Hi guys, Sully Dubbed here, and today I'm doing a video review on the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless, or 3.0 3 wireless. Now these are active noise cancellation headphones that come in at a whopping £350. In the US you can find them for $400, links will be down in the description below if you're interested. Also in the description you will be able to see some of its competitors, ones that I'll be mentioning, for example the Bose um, Headphone 700 which I'll be directly comparing it to, and the uh, uh, Sony uh, XM3s as well. So do bear that in mind, check down in the description below for alternatives, including buy links to them. So without further ado, let's get into this review. So first off I want to talk about the build quality design and also what you get in the box. Well aside the headphones themselves, you've got a nice little carrying pouch, however it is a soft carrying pouch so do bear that in mind, it's not very hard. Um, so if you're going to chuck it around then it might cause some problems. you got some manuals over here and some warranty information as you normally would expect. And then over here you've got a set of cables. It was quite interesting to find this has a USB to USB-C, um, uh, well two ends of USB-C, um, with a USB-C to USB Type-A adapter in the, in the package. Um, essentially Sennheiser's thought of this is that more modern you know, laptops and things like that are coming with USB-C only so therefore it's a, a way of charging your headphones so I, I get that and the fact that including the adapter is fine and then you've got the traditional 3.5mm jack interconnect as well so now let's move on to the headphones themselves now you can see right now they're folded and you might be wondering why well this is when they're off to switch them on and I literally had to consult the, uh, the manual for this because I just couldn't figure it out you have to there you go, you turn them on by literally um, unfolding them. Now, this might seem ingenious to some people, potentially people at Sennheiser as well, but I would have much preferred an on and off, a traditional on and off button, which would mean that I could just turn the headphones off and just leave them on my desk like that. Now, Sennheiser say that when they're around your neck, they go into an idle state. Um, however, I just would have, again, just preferred that element of I can just you know, turn them off by pressing a button or holding a button as you do on all other headphones I've come across. Now in terms of the battery life, this is where, like the reason I'm mentioning this is the battery life is quoted at 17 hours. Now 17 hours is decent, but in comparison to the industry, the Bose provides around 20 hours of playback time, whilst the Sony's provide around 30 hours of playback time. So in comparison to the industry, it's a little bit lower than expected, but 17 hours is still very much respectable. In terms of charging, yes, you might have guessed it's USB Type-C, um, which is no surprise, but it does take three hours to charge from empty, which is a lot slower than, say, the Sony's, which charge in a lot quicker time. Now, in terms of the buttons, other, other than the actual clicking function, you've got a, well, you've got a 3.5mm jack for your, um, for your headphones uh, to connect, um, uh, you know, if you don't want to connect via wirelessly. Then you've got um, your... Um, your assistant button which you can disable or enable through the app then you've got play and pause functions um, a volume up and down and skip and next um, and then you've got uh, this, this toggle over here which is to toggle A and C so A and C off is in this position A and C on is in this position and if you were to toggle it down where you hear that little tone that little tone there indicates you're in transparent hearing mode and transparent hearing mode essentially allows you to listen to your surroundings kind of amplifies the surroundings which is great and again a feature that a lot of its competitors also provide there are no touch sensitive buttons uh, around the headphones which I must say I'm you know, happy with but then then again Bose did implement them very well so other than that, let's talk about the comfort. Now here is where I absolutely love the headphones. So I wear glasses as you might have seen at the beginning of the video and I feel that the pads over here are not only soft, but so really, well, they're absolutely lovely that you can wear these headphones for hours on end without discomfort. The clamp force as well is not too strong, which means that again, you can wear them in the office, for example, without having to worry about being, them being uncomfortable for a long period of time. So props to Sennheiser for including really nice soft pads and also having a nice over the ear design that even around my huge ears fits perfectly. At the top, you've got very little padding, but the padding, again, is very nice and soft, so I had no sort of complaints, and it's kind of got, got a breathable design, so if you do sweat or you do take them out on runs or whatever, the, the, you know, the, the design is made so that it can easily filter through that uh, sweat. I know that sounds gross, but, you know, you've got to cover it. 
Now, in terms of wireless transmission, these headphones connect over Bluetooth. As I said, you can connect it via 3.5mm jack as well. In terms of Bluetooth, you've got the SBC, the APTX, APTX Low Latency, and AAC Codex at your availability. Now, I connect, I use an Android phone, so I can't test it with iPhone to see if there's any latency issues. But when I was watching YouTube videos, a test that I usually do with headphones or any wireless product, I didn't notice any latency problems with these headphones, which is a great sign. So, this was because it was using the APTX codec, and of course, if you're going to use any of the other codecs, I would revert to SBC rather than AAC on Android. If you're on iPhone, then it should pretty much automatically revert to the AAC codec. If you've got an iPhone or if you've got a Mac, it'll go to the APTX codec. So overall, in terms of codecs-wise, I had no complaints whatsoever. Um, and in terms of how it connected wirelessly, again, really faultlessly, and it was very, um, very simultaneous uh, to my phone. So before moving on, I did want to mention uh, the smart control app, the, the Sennheiser smart control app that you can download on iOS or Android. Now, uh, as you'll be able to see, the app is very intuitive, very simple, but as you can see, you've got a few different options. So for example, active noise cancellation, you can filter between max, anti-wind, and also anti-pressure. Now the anti-pressure is quite a nice feature because for those people who are a bit sensitive to um, active noise cancellation and the sort of pressure it kind of builds on your ears, you can have this uh, mode. It's a very subtle difference, but there is a difference in there. So it's great to see that Sennheiser has included it. You've got a transparent hearing mode. Again, you can have the transparent transparent hearing mode enabled or disabled uh, via that little toggle but then if you enable it via the app then you can also have it so that um, you can have your music uh, playing while you're still in transparent mode. Moving on from that you've got the equalizer which I'm going to allude to in a bit but um, you can adjust this um, however you uh, however you so wish. Um, I leave it on default specifically when I'm doing tests because I want to assess the quality of the headphones. And then via the uh, settings one you can um, adjust the smart pause uh, function um, as well so you can enable or disable that if you so wish. Um, and that is something I did want to allude to as well because these headphones do automatically pause and resume when you got them off your head. So for example when when you put them on your head they will resume music you take them off and put them down on the ground or put them around your neck they will automatically pause which is a great function um, and it's nice to see that Sennheiser has actually included this it's not revolutionary but it's great to see it because the Bose headphones for example don't don't have that feature and I do find myself sometimes frustrated when I'm using the Bose headphones that I just want them to automatically pause so it's great to see that then you can also have um, voice or tone or off in terms of prompts like for example when you're connected or you're disconnected from uh, from your source device you can update the firmware uh, which funnily enough the firmware version has just come out over here the um, 3.05 which adds um, Alexa support so now you've got Google Assistant you've got Alexa and you've got obviously Siri as well via your, your phone um, so it's great to see all those um, assistants now included um, so there we go so I know at the beginning of the video I did show how it looks around the neck, as you can see it's pretty, not bulky, but it's um, you can see there's substantial weight around your neck. But I also wanted to show you how they look around uh, the ears, so you'll be able to see like this, you can see the, the traditional sort of Sennheiser uh, design. Now what I was alluding to before in terms of the uh, noise that reverberates, it's around here. Now if you were to uh, wear like a high collar thing or you're wearing hoodie or something like that, the noise that brushes across this uh, metal plate over here kind of reverberates around the ear. Now this is a problem that I noticed uh, previously in Sennheiser um, headphones. It's very much the case um, um, with the Sennheiser wireless. So bear that in mind um, in terms of comfort and then in terms of look. I wouldn't say they're the most attractive headphones, but they very much use the sort of traditional headphone sort of approach. So now let's get into the actual mic quality, the recording quality of the headphones. A recording quality is quite important because if you want to be taking calls on the go, you don't want to be reaching out to your mobile, especially where you, when you're wearing over-the-ear headphones, it's quite important. Now in this test, what I did is I compared them directly to the Bose um, noise cancelling 700 headphones. The reason I took the Bose um, as a benchmark is because they are by far the best um, headphones out there in the market, be it noise cancellation or not, to have excellent recording capabilities. They pick out voice very clearly, and better still, when you've got a very uh, busy environment, then what you'll find is the Bose headphones is a are able to cancel out that background noise very well. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case with the Sennheiser headphones. I was coming to expect excellent microphone uh, recording quality uh, with the Sennheiser headphones, simply because of Sennheiser's background in terms of recording and making mics, and unfortunately that wasn't the case. Here I found that the, um, the noise, the, the, 
notes or sound quality that you got via the recording was good. However, when it came to background sounds, it very much, not say struggled, but it, you could very much hear the background sounds very loudly. Um, in the test that I did, I just found it not to be anywhere near as good as the Bose headphones. I would say it's slightly better than the Sony um, 1000XM3s, but it's not really there shouting about how well its recording capabilities are, which is slightly a shame given the fact of Sennheiser's pedigree uh, when it comes to recording um, equipment from microphones, as I said before, or uh, professional audio equipment. Now let's talk about noise cancellation, which is arguably one of the most important features of the headphones because you know paying a premium for that. Now I compared it directly to the, to the Bose um, uh, noise cancelling headphones 700, also to the Sony XM3s and from memory the XM2s as well. What I found is that all the other three headphones, including also the Neurophone, which I almost forgot, the Neurophone headphones, all four of the headphones, all performed a lot better in terms of noise cancellation versus the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless. Now why is this the case? Well, what I found is that with low-end hums, the Bose and Sony headphones and the Neurophone headphones, in fact, all managed to do an excellent job at cancelling low-end hums. The Sennheiser headphones did a good job, but I wouldn't say excellent job at cancelling those low-end um, hums or vibrations. So for example, if you're in a plane and you're, you're put on your noise cancellation headphones, you really kind of want to block out all that, that airplane's um, noise that you'd normally hear. Here, the Bose, the Sonys and uh, the Neurophones were able to deliver fantastic performance. The same couldn't really be said about the Sennheisers. Moving on to the mid to high frequency, so like spoken word or let's say train noises in the background or even people talking, what I found is that the Bose headphones did a decent job, the Sony XM2s also did a decent job, whereas the Neurophones and the XM3s did an excellent job. The Sennheisers here sat below all of those headphones. It did an okay job. So yes, it did block out some sounds and yes, you did feel a little bit isolated and yes, because they're over the ear headphones, you've got to get that pa passive isolation as well. But when it came to noise cancellation, the feature I was looking for, it just didn't compete to its competitors, which is a shame because the headphones had a lot of promise in my opinion when it came to noise cancellation. But it's only when I compared them to its competitors that I realized, actually, no, it's kind of struggling versus the rest. And this was on the max setting of via the app. So I just made sure that I wasn't using a different setting or anything like that. I made sure it's using the max um, noise cancellation feature uh, through the app. And unfortunately, it just couldn't keep up. With that out of the way, let's talk about sound quality. And here is where the Sennheiser headphones really shined over all the other headphones in the noise cancelling um, segment. So much so it very much took me by surprise of how well they sounded and how well they were able to deliver a excellent sound throughout the frequency range. I didn't feel at one point that the Sennheiser headphones were struggling in a certain frequency. So let me break it down to you. First of all let's talk about the bass. The sub bass is present and it's very much there. The bass extends very well into the lower end tones and the mid bass has a very strong pronounced sound. I would say in some respect it was a little bit overly bassy at times on the music I was listening to. Um, I would feel that if you're listening to more classical orientated music or less bass orientated uh, music I'll be tempted to go via the smart control app and as I showed you before to just um, adjust the equalizer. But as I have to uh, judge headphones, I always go on the neutral uh, equalizer settings and therefore just give my assessment based on that. So that would be my personal suggestion, maybe reduce the bass a slight notch if you're listening to more classical oriented music. If however you're like me, you love R&B music or dance music, what you'll find is that mid bass slam really does hit really well. Now in comparison to the bows, these um, extend very well in the lower uh, frequencies. But in terms of control, they also deliver fantastic control in the mid bass um, frequencies, which is something the Sony 1000 XM3s cannot boast about. The Sony XM, uh, XM3s essentially have a wobbly mid bass. Yes, they do extend very well into the lower end, uh, lower end frequencies, but it does have a wobble in the mid bass, and these Sennheiser headphones simply do not. They were extremely faultless in that, in that, um, in that frequency. 
Moving on to the mids, here the Bose headphones came out on top simply due to the fact that the mid bass frequencies were less emphasized on the Bose headphones versus the Sennheiser headphones. As I said before, if you EQ it, then you will get excellent mid-range um, mid mid frequencies and mid-range tones. This does kind of set itself apart again from the Sony um, headphones. The Sony headphones sounded a little bit more V-shaped, a little bit more kind of pushed back in the mid-tones. Uh, mid in comparison to the Bose, again, the Sennheiser just didn't sound as forward-sounding, but was very much capable of having giving you that forward sound, but you'd have to EQ that via the app or via your, your player or whatever it is, so it's such a power amp on Android. So into the mid-range frequencies, it's capable, but its default setting does give it a warmer V-shaped type of signature, but isn't as V-shaped as the Sony XM3s. In terms of the highs, again here is where I, I was so surprised at the Sennheiser headphones. They were able to extend very well at the top end without um, rolling off. They, they had a really nice clear symbols at the, at the top end and they didn't feel like they were kind of subdued. Whereas the Bose headphones, and it's one of my complaints of the Bose headphones versus the Sony's, is the fact that the Bose headphones have this kind of roll off at the top end. The Sony's on the other hand, again, sound very, um, very eloquent at the top end and are very much um, equal in, in the high frequencies to the uh, Sennheiser headphones. Then came Soundstage, and Soundstage was really, apart from everything I've been saying about the headphones already, the Soundstage really was incredible. Now, don't get me wrong, the Sony and the Bose headphones have great instrument separation and good sort of width. They lack a little bit of depth, but overall, you've got a very engaging sound and you don't feel cl claustrophobic in any sort of respect. Whereas these headphones took it to another level. They reminded me of my audiophile grace headphones that I use at home with those, you know, pretty thicker pads and the the way that they're able to deliver uh, extra instrument separation and great width and depth um, that you'd expect from an audiophile grade headphone. And the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless really delivered excellently um, in, in this, uh, in this sort of department. So in terms of the sound stage, you've got great width, great depth, as I mentioned. That instrument separation is fantastic. Positional cues are fantastic. If you're going to be gaming with these headphones, be it on your PC or on your mobile, you're going to get really nice positional cues. And sound didn't feel congested and it didn't feel like it didn't have space to breathe. And also on top of that, you had excellent, uh, sort of excellent tonality, which is something that the other headphones couldn't kind of boast about as much as these headphones could do. So in conclusion, what do I make out of the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless? Well, quite simply put, they do sound fantastic. There's no denying that they do sound among one of the best sounding noise cancellation headphones out there. And in my opinion, are more comfortable than the Neurophone headphones, which have a in-ear bit which sticks in, which can be a little bit awkward for some. Um, so as an overall package, I was impressed of its sound quality characteristics. And in terms of its design, now it can be, you know, arguably not as nice as the Bose headphones, but there's nothing overly wrong. Then in terms of comfort, I was pleasantly surprised, specifically with the really thick pads. And as you can see, I wear glasses, so, you know, it, it didn't feel like I was being digged in at any point. And then its codec support was acceptable as well. However, there was a lot of things here which kind of were more negatives. So first of all was the recording quality, it just wasn't as good as the Bose headphones. And yes, it was as good, if not a little bit better than the Sony headphones. I just expected a lot more from Sennheiser as the brand and more so at the £100 premium that you're paying right now uh, for these headphones. And then in terms of functionality, I just wasn't a fan of this you know, turn off and turn on function when you click and click out of it. I just would have just liked the button or with the option of choosing between the two. And then in terms of noise cancellation, which was is the most important element of these headphones, because you take noise cancellation out of the element, then you are not comparing it to these Bose and Sony headphones or Neurophone headphones, you're comparing it to regular Bluetooth headphones. I found that noise cancellation just wasn't as good as its competitors, which meant that these headphones you know, turned to really good Bluetooth headphones for listening to music, but not my go-to headphones if I really wanted to be isolated from the world or take calls on them um, without having to reach for my phone. So it's a bit of a you know a double-sided like two sides of the argument. 
you know, that you can take about it. I'll let you guys decide as to if they're worth buying or not. Personally, I just think they're just a bit too expensive and I just wish that the uh, noise cancellation and microphone quality were just better, at which point I'd be actively recommending them even though they cost a lot more than its competitors. If you're looking for the best noise cancellation headphones, I would still stick to the Sony XM3s. They do have their faults, but overall I'm very impressed with them. If you want the most stylish headphones, I would choose the Bose uh, noise cancellation 700 headphones. If you want the most personalized sound and a unique type of take on a headphone, choose the Neurophone. If, however, you just want a comfortable over-the-ear headphone that has noise cancellation and sounds absolutely spectacular throughout the frequency range, then it's the Sennheiser headphones. Hopefully I've made that clear enough for you guys in terms of giving you my honest, unbiased, unpaid opinion. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and if you have, make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more, favorite and share as it will help the channel grow. Take care guys, totally dubbed out. Bye bye.